Many viewers who have an interest in One West history will be familiar with this undated photo of Ariya's boy with Abba Bibbins. According to a One West legend, which was promoted by the ICGJC, the image is supposed to be from Ariya's bar mitzvah. And in this video, I'd like to propose a different context for the image and perhaps shed a bit more light on it. Let me first note that I briefly touched on this topic back in July of 2016 when I appeared on an episode of The Dividing Line hosted by Vocab Malone. So I just want to play a little 30 second clip as a sort of prologue to this video and, uh, and then we'll get into the fuller details. So we'll be picking it up at just before the 35 minute mark. Exactly. They claim that this was his bar mitzvah. Right. Now, I, don't, I have my doubts about that because an interesting thing about it is two men, one of them being Abba Bivens. Abba Bivens is is the man right next to Ariya. Can we show a close-up of Baba Bivens there? He's the with the, the older man with the beard there, Rich. Okay, I got a, the closer-up of Baba Bivens. He's holding, a, he's holding a lulav in his hand. He's holding a palm. This seems to obviously actually be during uh, Sukkot, during uh, what they call Hoshana Rabbah, which is, uh, I think, the seventh day of Sukkot. So that's what I think this is. But none of So as I touched on in that clip, one reason to doubt that this was a photo from Arya's bar mitzvah is the fact that it seems like two men in the image, including Bibbins himself, are holding palm fronds, you know, or, or, or palm leaves, which is to say they're essentially holding the lulab, which, which is held by rabbinic Jews during Sukkot in general, and in particular on Hoshana Rabbah, which falls on the last day of Sukkot. And perhaps you can see the lulab a bit more clearly in this close-up photo of Bibbins. To me, it looks clearly like a rabbinic style palm frond, right? It looks clearly like a rabbinic lulab, right? And in fact, the whole photo has a rabbinic style to it, from the lulab in his hand to the talit, which is to say the, the rabbinic prayer shawl on his shoulders, and even the mitznefet, the, 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 the headgear atop his bibbin's head. But whatever the case, the central point here that I would propose is that because of the presence of the lulab, unless Arya's birthday fell around Sukkot or unless they held his bar mitzvah during Sukkot, this is unlikely to be a photo from his bar mitzvah. It seems far more likely that this is a photo taken at a Sukkot event, perhaps more specifically during Hoshana Rabbah, which again, as I said, falls on the last day of Sukkot. And uh, by the way, this year, Hoshana Rabbah fell yesterday. Now, if this photo is actually from Hoshana Rabbah, that would be a sign that Bibbins took somewhat more of a rabbinic approach to Sukkot. But the reality is that we don't have to speculate about that from the photo alone. Rather, we in fact know that Bibbins took a more rabbinic approach to Sukkot from his own writings. If one turns to his book, Marks of a Lost Race, one finds at the bottom of page 70 and the top of page 71 that Bibbins celebrated Shmini Atzeret, which is, I would propose, as a distinctly rabbinic celebration that falls after the end of Sukkot, right? It's the very next day after Hoshana Rabbah. Now, however, perhaps I should put forth a disclaimer. Uh, it, you know, one might argue that Shmini Atzeret is at least alluded to in Leviticus, uh, Leviticus 23.36. You won't see it in an English translation of, you know, of a Christian Bible, but... Uh, both words appear in the Hebrew text of that verse, you know, both Shmini and Atzeret, but uh, they, they don't appear in succession, right? They're not together as a single phrase. But it is possible that someone might object to me calling it a distinctly uh, rabbinic celebration, right? They might say that Shmini, Shmini Atzeret actually has biblical roots, right? What I would say, therefore, is the fact that Bibbins chose the same exact phrase as is employed in rabbinic Judaism, Shmini Atzeret, I don't think that's coincidental. Moreover, and perhaps more significantly, the fact that he saw it as restarting the annual cycle of weekly, weekly Torah readings also shows rabbinic influence on Bibbins' understanding of the concept. But whatever the case, putting that aside, that said, you know, permit me to note that this year, today, is Shmini Atzeret. Hence the appropriateness of making this video on this day. Now, on the subject of timelines, it is worth noting that according to online records, Arya is apparently around 82 years old. If we assume that he was around, let's say, 12 or 13 years old when that photo was taken, 
we can date the photo to approximately 70 years ago, which is to say the early 1950s. That's significant because we can also date Bibbin's book to roughly that time as well. And the reason why we can do that is because the book got mentioned in a 1952 article by Howard Bratz, in which Bibbins was interviewed while he was at the Commandment Keepers. So let's put all these points together, right? Let's try to summarize what we've discussed in this short video. First, the photo of Arya and Bibbins seems to bear signs that Bibbins took a rabbinic approach to Sukkot. Second, Bibbins' own book, Affirming Shmini Atzeret, shows that he did indeed take a rabbinic approach to Sukkot in the early 1950s. And third, noting Arya's approximate age, both now and at the time of the photo, it's reasonable to think that the photo is roughly contemporary with the book. And I wanted to share all that because I think Bibbins' own writings provide insights which shed potential new light on the context of the photo of him and Arya. Not only does it seem safe to say that the photo was taken during or perhaps even at the end of Sukkot, but that it, it, it also allows us to say that the photo was probably taken right around this time of year. So we're somewhere right around the anniversary of that photo. You know, it probably was taken in either very late September or early October. And I hope those who have an interest in One West history find this fact interesting and insightful. And on that note, I'll close this video here. As always, I look forward to the comments of others. God bless.